the buzzard's call is the familiar sound above the Cornish countryside. And by late spring, the adult birds are busy at their nests looking after their chicks. After incubating for approximately five weeks, these two chicks have hatched in the same order as they were laid, with a period of two days between each of them. At just over a week old, the chicks are already testing their muscles and wings. Yet we have to wonder if at this stage they have any idea at all about the magnificent birds of prey they will soon become. Even at this early stage, the chicks have very good vision and are fully aware of their surroundings. Left to their own devices, while the parents are off hunting, the chicks fully explore the nest and wait patiently for the next meal to drop in and are usually pre-warned of its arrival by the ever closer call of the parents. The buzzard is the most common of Britain's larger birds of prey and although they are strong and have formidable talons and beak, they are nevertheless nervous when on land and will leave their nest if at all worried. While the chicks are still so small, the parent tears off baby bite-sized chunks from the rabbit she has just caught and feeds the chicks individually. The common buzzard is an opportunistic predator, surviving on a purely carnivorous diet, but although a top predator, they will occasionally eat carrion when times are lean. Rabbits are the favourite, as they are usually plentiful in number and relatively easy to catch. But the buzzard's diet also consists of a variety of small mammals and birds as well as insects and earthworms and snakes. Although a relatively common bird today, in the 19th century they were shot in large numbers by gamekeepers and by the early 1900s they had disappeared from many parts of Britain. Then, as the First World War took hold of our country, Many gaming estates were abandoned as gamekeepers were enlisted to fight. This gave the buzzards the opportunity to partly recover their numbers. Now we generally have a more enlightened view of this magnificent bird of prey and so have allowed it to once again soar over many of its old territories. Now the first semblance of real feathers are starting to take shape and the fast growing chicks are beginning to feel for the first time the breeze in their outstretched wings.
The parents are now starting to leave food at the nest and letting the chicks come to terms with eating large objects in their own way. It's a slow process, but one that must be learnt if they are to survive. It's interesting to see that even birds of prey can get constipated and that all the effort in the world isn't going to produce results. The feathers are really starting to take shape now and the legs are getting strength to the muscles that will one day lift a fully grown rabbit into the air. Although rabbits do form a main part of the diet, they are by no means a wholly reliable source of food. The virus myxomatosis, introduced by man in 1954 to destroy the rabbit populations, is constantly reoccurring and as rabbit numbers fall, so it reflects on the buzzards. The large nest is slowly becoming smaller in relative size to the now fast growing chicks, but sharing is something they both seem to do well. When they become fully matured breeding adults, they will be fiercely territorial and, though rare, fights do break out if one strays on another pair's territory. Although buzzards mate for life, they are generally solitary animals, hunting and feeding alone, coming together only for the breeding time of year. The birds are nearly eight weeks old now and becoming restless to take that first tentative flight from the nest that has for so long protected them. Life ahead for these two is not going to be an easy one. Three quarters of young buzzards die, mostly from starvation, before they mature at three years old. Generally, for those who make it beyond that, they may have an average lifespan of eight years. Although the oldest wild buzzard known was 25 years old.
The successful growth of these two birds has largely depended on a good food supply, but the other major factor in this is the lack of interference from humans, be it illegal or accidental. Human interference causes up to half of all nest failures. Buzzards became a protected species in Britain around 50 years ago, and at the moment are doing well, with around 40,000 breeding pairs throughout the country. There is no defining moment to mark the departure from the nest but the constant cry from parents above brings our chicks closer to the point of fledging. There are a few moments of looking around, and then suddenly, they're gone. A temporary perch gives one of the chicks a chance to look at this huge new world, and then it's time to go.